Sorry. Hey.
person, whether it's online or whether it's over the phone, we are so glad that you have decided to join us this morning. We want to uh, welcome uh, Lan uh, Wilson, who is the Director of Worship for GNJUMC. Uh, we are uh, so blessed to be able to have your talents and gifts with us this morning, and so we are excited that you are uh, here with us as Allah is on vacation this morning. We have uh, another announcement, which is we will have our book study from 2 to 3 o'clock uh, on Wednesday. If you would like to join us for that, you can feel free to contact the office, myself or Pastor Barbara, and uh, we will make sure to be able to get you the link so you can uh, join us. Any other announcements? Okay. All right, if there are uh, no other announcements, um, actually there is one, I will be uh, keeping my distance. I, I did get to go ahead and be all clear that everything is good, but just to be safe, I will uh, keep my distance from everybody. So if I am waving you from a distance or I'm standing over here, that's why I'm not being rude. I'm just making sure that everyone's safe. So um, just want to make sure that I communicated that to everyone who is in person. For those of you who are online, no worries, we're more than six feet apart, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, since there are no more uh, announcements this morning, let us bow our heads and hearts for a word of prayer. God of fall and winter, God of spring and summer, you know the seasons of our lives. Let the season of darkness and doubt pass away, that we may be reborn in your light. Lead us into a season of light and warmth, a season of joy, a season of sober judgment, a season where your children clothe themselves in the breastplate of faith and hope and helmet of salvation. Help us put aside the ways of darkness and live as children of light. Amen. For those who are uh, at home, we will invite you to join us in the singing of our opening hymn, number 384, Love Divine, All Loves Excel.
of the Lord. Delight in God's goodness. Praise God who gives each person a special gift to be nurtured and shared. Lord, we thank you for these gifts. Come, let us worship God who entrusts us with so much. Lord, make us worthy of your love and trust in us. Amen. So this week for the children's chat, since we're going to talk about love, Pastor Josh brought in something that he loves, comics. So I brought in a comic uh, that I actually spent time reading, and I bought this just before Jackson was born, because I knew when Jackson was born, uh, Jackson decided to take his time to come into the world, so we were going to be in the hospital for a little while. So I went to go visit Mr. Mike at the comic book store uh, just across the corner, and uh, I found uh, a comic that I wanted to read. It was going to take me a little while while we were waiting for Jackson to be born. But while I love collecting comics, I'll let you answer this to your parents, whether they're here or whether you're at home. Do you think comics love me back as much as I love collecting them? Well, I hope that you answered no, because the answer is no. As many comics as I might collect, or as much as I love comics, well, they don't love me back. And so I'll talk a little bit in the sermon that a lot of times we spend time chasing after things that we think will love us back, that, well, they don't. But the good news is, is that God loves us unconditionally. And what that means is that God loves us no matter what we've done. God loves us. And God is there to tell us that God loves us. And so that's what I'm going to talk with the adults about today. So the next time you see a comic, maybe you'll think about uh, Pastor Josh and the fact that uh, he brought this comic to church and decided to talk about God's love and how much God loves you. So this time we're going to invite those of you who are at home to join us for the singing of our next hymn, number 408, The Gift of Love.
friends, at this time we are going to enter our time of prayer here at the United Methodist Church at Milltown. The first thing that we can be thankful for this week is the continued thanks for all of our essential workers as month after month they continue to be on the front lines of fighting this pandemic. So thanks be to God. Amen. want to be thankful for all those who donated, uh, those who have volunteered, uh, all those who have come by in the midst of helping with our food pantry, our large-scale food pantry. Thankful for the ministry of St. Paul's and Pastor Matt down the street and Our Lady of Lourdes and all of their volunteers uh, down the street uh, in the uh, other direction um, as uh, we were able to help feed so many people. Uh, and so I'm very thankful uh, for those and for Pastor Barbara who uh, really kind of became the face of the food pantry and helping uh, those families. So thanks be to God. Amen. And thanks be to God for uh, answered prayer. There were a number of answered prayers this week. Uh, so thanks be to God for that. Amen. As we transition into uh, times of prayer, uh, may we be uh, people that are in prayer for those who are battling different health concerns, those who are dealing with the difficulty of loss, especially uh, this time of year as things get difficult with the holiday season coming up, uh, for those who have uh, difficult decisions uh, or who are waiting for uh, specific answers, for teachers, students, and parents, as this is an ever-changing uh, school year. Um, it seems like one week things are open, another week things are closed, one school district is different from another. Uh, let's be in prayer for everyone involved. For those who are getting surgery, including uh, the Lord in your mercy, through our prayers. Also, let's be in prayer for uh, unspoken prayer requests. Lord in your mercy, through our prayers. This time, friends, let's bow our heads and hearts for a word of prayer. God, as we take time now to pause in this worship service to spend time in prayer and conversation with you. We're thankful for the example of sacrifice and service of the essential workers that continue to go before us week after week and month after month. We pray for them and for their families. We're thankful for the ministry of the food pantry here at the church and for all those who have volunteered, volunteered or donated. We're thankful for the community of Milltown that rallied around that as well. God, we're thankful that you are a God that listens, hears our prayers, a God that answers prayer. God, when we come with hearts of thanksgiving, we come also with heavy hearts as we think of those that we love those that are battling different health issues, those who are dealing with the difficulty of loss. No matter how recent or long ago, loss is something that is so difficult to deal with. We pray for those who need to feel your presence. God, we pray for those who are waiting or having to make difficult decisions. We pray for our teachers, our students, and our parents in this ever-changing and evolving school year. We think of those like they who are getting surgery. God, we lift up all of these prayer requests, including those that are unspoken and those that are on our hearts this very moment as we are praying. You swear a God that is ever more ready to listen than we are to speak. As we take time now to pray the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 9 through 18, and this is what the scripture says. Nicodemus said, How are these things possible? Jesus answered, You are a teacher of Israel, and you don't know these things? I assure you that we speak about what we know and testify about what we have seen. You don't receive our testimony. If I told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who came down from heaven, the human one. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the human one be lifted up also, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, so that everyone who believes will not perish, but will have eternal life. God didn't send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him isn't judged. Whoever doesn't believe in him is already judged, because they don't believe in the name of God's only Son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before I get into um, the message and we offer up a prayer, I want to make sure I make the announcement that next weekend, um, next Sunday, in fact, at 4 p.m., we will have our community Thanksgiving service. I know that there's a lot of things that we have not had because of COVID, but Pastor Matt, Father Ed, and I had a discussion about, well, what do we do? And we decided that we're going to go ahead and we're going to have the community service because all three of our churches are in need of so the community Thanksgiving service will take place at uh, 4 p.m. at Our Lady of Lourdes. And because Matt is the new pastor in town, he's preaching. That's how we came to that decision. So Pastor Matt from St. Paul's will be preaching. Uh, so again, community Thanksgiving service is next uh, weekend, next Sunday at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So I want to make sure I got that out. Let's bow our heads and hearts for a word of prayer. God, as we come before you listening to the message, it would be a people of open minds and open hearts. People that understand the message that you love us, well, it's not too good to be true, that it's very much true. And that there's good news found in John 3.16. Be with the meditations of my heart and the words of my mind. Amen. So as we prepare to start today, I want you to think about the time that you felt just complete love. Just complete and utter love. Maybe it's something you feel on a daily basis. Maybe it's an event that took place in your life. But I want you to think about a time that you felt complete and utter love. I'll give you two examples from my life. The first was a special day, and that was the day that I married my beautiful wife, Beth, over 10 years ago. We got married in the city of Millville, uh, deep down in South Jersey. And Millville, the first giant Methodist church there, the sanctuary is bigger than the space that we're here at in uh, Milltown. And uh, that place was packed on our wedding day. And it was packed with people that wanted to show Beth and I that they loved us, that they supported us, that they were there for us. And so that day, when I think back on it, it's not just the day of Beth and I celebrating our love for each other, but it's a day of the fact that there were so many people there to show that they loved and supported us, because there were also people in the wedding party standing up there with us. But on a daily basis, I want to paint a picture for you of when I come in the door from work with my two kids and my four-legged furry kid. 
The first person that greets me at the door is that four-legged furry kid, Gambit. And he is so excited to be able to see me, even if he's not feeling all that well, he is the first one there and hardly lets me in the door. And that's his way of letting me know I love him. Right behind him is Jackson, and I can't even get my bag off before he's giving me a hug, and he always says the same thing, Daddy, come play train tracks. Because, well, that is Jackson's favorite toy. And then, in the distance, you hear two feet pitter-patter and four wheels rolling, because Raylan is in her walker, and she has to follow her brother's lead, come over the door, and she gives her little wave and says, Hi, Dad. That is my children's way of letting me know on a daily basis just how much I need. Complete love. Now, I've painted two pictures for you, but I'm sure that you have examples in your life, and I want you to hold on to those examples because I'm going to talk about love today but not love with conditions, unconditional love. As we spent time this series talking about, we so often invest our time in things that we think will love us back, but in all reality, they don't. Because unconditional love can only be found in God. As we get started today with this text, I want to make something very, very clear. And if you hear Nothing else from the message today. Understand three words. God loves you. John 3.16 is probably the most popular verse in the entire Bible, but it doesn't change its message at all or make it any less true. God loves you. For God so loved the world that God gave up God's only Son, that whoever believes in God shall not perish, but have eternal life. So many of us can say this verse by heart, but we just kind of speedily go through it, and that's why I said it slowly, so I want to slow down and highlight a couple of key points for us. The first is, for God what? So love. That God gave up. Love is an action here. The action of God sending Jesus was an action done in love. Second, why was Jesus born? Because God loves you. Why did Jesus live a perfect life? Because God loves you. Why did Jesus teach all the lessons that Jesus taught? Because God loves you. Why did Jesus have to die and Jesus have to rise from the dead? Because of those three words. God loves you. God's love is giving in nature. That's what John 3.16 tells us. For he so loved the world that he what? He gave. God gave up God's only Son, and not just any gift, not an earthly gift, an eternal gift. I want you to go back to that image of love that I wanted you to hold on to and understand something about love. The examples that I use show that love has to be given by nature. Love giving is in its very core. It's in its identity. But the gift that God gave, again, is not something worldly, not something that we spend our time pursuing. This is a gift, again, that's eternal. God gave God's only Son. And the end goal of that was a death, but rather eternal life. So if we're using the word eternal, who is eternal? God is eternal. So if God loves you, and God gave up God's only Son so that you could also be eternal with God, what does that mean? It means that God wants to spend eternity with you. So let's talk about eternity. And I'm going to use COVID quarantine as an example. Sometimes quarantine, well, it feels like in eternity. And we may be looking at another lockdown. Do you remember the first lockdown, the last lockdown? Maybe you began to notice that some of your family members, not Beth and my kids, but some of your family members maybe, developed some, we'll call it, fun habits 
were fun traits that began to, well, grate on me. Friends, this is a short period of time. Maybe all of a sudden you decided for the first time in your life that you were going to volunteer to food shop. Or you were going to decide to go out to the stores because, well, you just needed a break. Or maybe your doctors are going to be so happy with you because you will be the healthiest you have ever been because of the number of walks you have decided to go on because you just need a break from those that you're surrounded by. Friends, eternity is a lot longer than a short quarantine. But here's the good news. God wants to spend eternity with you. God doesn't want to go out on a shopping trip. God doesn't want to go out on a walk to get away from you. God wants to be with you. Despite all of our mistakes, all of our frustrations, God loves you so much that he wants you to come home and be with God. As we continue to reflect on this text, Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night. He's asking Jesus questions and questioning Jesus' teaching. And this is how Jesus responds. Not only are you loved, but God loves everyone. And Nicodemus is confused. He just doesn't get it. We see this because the text starts off with a question. How is this possible? This would have rocked Nicodemus' work, Nicodemus' world. See, in Nicodemus' world, it was about them. It was about the select few. They were the only ones that were loved. That's what they were taught. What Jesus is teaching here goes against everything that Nicodemus had ever learned and been taught. Yet here Jesus is telling Nicodemus, in the midst of Jesus being questioned, you're loved, and so is everyone. So then there's the other side. There's Jesus. Jesus shows God's love in unconditional love. Friends, I don't know about you, but when someone begins to question me, my first response is not, God loves you, and God loves the world. No, my first response is to, well, start explaining myself, start defending myself, why I made that decision. It's not unconditional love. It's not God loves you, and God loves the world. See, we have a hard time understanding this idea of unconditional love and believing in unconditional love because it's just simply so mind-blowing to us because our love has conditions. You break one of those conditions, the love goes away. Jesus uses the word believe seven times in ten verses. You can say that believe is an important word in this text. When Jesus talks about this word believe here, he's not simply talking about understanding. No, Jesus is talking about placing trust and hope in God. Jesus is talking about giving up the one thing that we as humanity love to have, control. To show balance between love and belief, Jesus even goes into detail on something that Nicodemus would understand so there's no more misunderstanding, there's no more unbelief. Jesus uses an example from the Torah, the snake on a pole. Jesus simply tells Nicodemus, repent and believe. It's about genuinely turning from what we have been doing and beginning to trust God fully. It's about giving up control and understanding that the God who loves us is the God who has gone on before us. Jesus even takes it one step further, explaining the prophecy that he would die and raise from the dead. That Jesus wasn't there to condemn the world, but that Jesus was there to save the world. See, the problem for Nicodemus and sometimes ourselves is not a lack of explanation, but it's a lack of of will, uh, wisdom and a lack of a failure to actually believe. We think that we are simply too far gone. We think that we have done well too much or we try to hide away our past by coming in the figurative night to Jesus because we're 
Well, a shame. We've heard John 3, 16 countless times. We've seen the signs at sporting events. We've heard it quoted to people. And many of us can recite that verse by heart. But it just seems too good to be true. Unconditional love. But here's the good news. It's not. We are the object of God's love. And there's no sacrifice that's too great. Even when we come questioning God, in the middle of the night, because we're ashamed, God simply looks at us and says, I love you, and I love the world. No matter what we've done, I can overcome it, because I have overcome the grave. Friends, that is the God that we worship. See, when you worship a God that has given up literally everything for you, there is nothing that can make us believe that unconditional love is too good to be true. We are called to believe even if life feels like it's nighttime outside and we're coming to Christ. I want to close with an example from Star Wars in the movie The Return of the Jedi. Luke purposefully turns himself over to the Empire with the intention of redeeming his father, Darth Vader. Spoiler alert. He insists to his sister, Leia, that there is indeed good in Darth Vader. At the end of the movie, the Emperor is killing Luke, and Darth Vader has a difficult choice. Do I keep the power that I have obtained through all of these years, or do I save my son? Again, spoiler alert. Well, Darth Vader makes the decision to throw the Emperor down the shaft that he saves Luke. As they are fleeing the Death Star, Darth Vader asks Luke to set him down and remove his helmet so he can look at him with his own eyes. As Luke takes his helmet off, his father then tells him to leave him. And Luke looks at Darth Vader and says, no, I have to save you. And Darth Vader just simply says, no, you already have Luke. You already have. This is an iconic scene in the Star Wars series. This redeeming love that Luke has for his father, Darth Vader, helps destroy the evil empire. Love has power for us. It can satisfy in ways that power alone, even some of the most ultimate and fantastical power ever, cannot. Friends, as I said, love has tremendous power. Giving power. God's unconditional love has power to overcome the grave and whatever you have done in life. There's no more need to hide in the night of your life. Come home and trust God's provenient grace, meaning that God has loved you before you have ever known. Carry that love, which lights up the darkness of life, of night, because after all, Christ is the light of the world. Friends, at this time we invite everyone uh, to sing uh, our closing hymn, number 572, Pass It On.
Friends, I invite you to bow your heads and hearts with me for our closing prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the one who created the universe call you by name. May Christ bless you with joy. May the Holy Spirit increase you with power of love, now and forever. Amen.